Hello and welcome to the Smarter Tech Podcast. I'm here with Dr. Wendy Myers. Dr. Myers, thanks so much for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, please let us know a little bit about your background because it's very, well, in, in my mind, very recently that uh, you became a naturopathic doctor. Uh, I know you because of your work around detoxification and heavy metals. In fact, more than 10 years ago, I heard you first on a podcast and it really opened my mind. It, it blew my mind, to be honest. And I was like, wait a minute, heavy metals, what is that? Do we have them? Uh, and how come, how come we're exposed to all this stuff that is unsafe? And it really shocked me, kind of leading me into EMFs, understanding that we're, we are unfortunately exposed to so many environmental toxins. So uh, what's your story and how did you get into the understanding of that heavy metal is such a big role in health. Oh, well, I'm kind of like you, a big health enthusiast. And, uh, you know, I was really shocked also when I started learning more about heavy metals and did my own heavy metals testing. And I was I, I couldn't believe that I led such a healthy lifestyle and, I, you know, amazing diet, organic and cooking my food at home and this huge bag of supplements and like literally this gigantic grocery sack of supplements, <laughs> but like the highest quality and just doing everything. And, um, you know, essentially when I did this, this heavy metal testing, I was shocked that I had all these heavy metals. And I was even more shocked when I started reading more about it, about how, uh, how prevalent metals and, and chemicals are in our environment and how much they're affecting our health and affecting every different organ system. And so that really, I think when I first started researching it, I just, I was like, aha, this is it. This is this is what uh, so many people are having issues with and where they have mystery illness or chronic fatigue or can't figure out what's going on with them or they're doing everything right for their health like me and still are having issues, still having fatigue and brain fog and, and other kind of like subclinical symptoms. And the doctor is like, oh, here's a antidepressant. Oh, here's a sleeping pill. Oh, you know, what, what have you. And, and for me, it began with going to the doctor and not really feeling all that great, not being able to lose weight. And then I was uh, having a lot of brain fog and come to find out all my hormones were really bad. I had the hormone levels of, of a menopausal woman. And um, I had, you know, low thyroid hormone, low sex hormones and low stress hormones at 37 years old. And I thought, how is that even possible with the healthy lifestyle that I lead? And that really, uh, that research and figuring out how toxins affect your hormones was kind of the genesis of me starting uh, my site, MyersDetox.com. Yeah, that's for me it was a shocker too. At mine happened at 26, my wake up call. But I I knew why I was sick though. It was basically not sleeping for two years as an entrepreneur. I mean, what do you expect? But anyway, I had the hormones of essentially, you know, zero testosterone. I mean, it, and and my mood was I felt so empty and demotivated and you know, apathic, no sex drive. It was yeah, horrible. Part of it. You know, part of my recovery was <laughs> calming down and sleeping, but I also went into a detox a little bit. I did have um, adverse reactions though, and that's part of the reason I wanted to have you on is um, have people understand that yes, the metals are real and also other toxins and they accumulate in your body. But if you do random things that you read about on the internet and try to detox, uh, I heard horror stories. So can you share a little bit about that and the fact that not all forms of detoxification are safe. Um, and is there science around that? Because I don't know if that's, you know, naturopathic medicine knowledge or is there actual, you know, scientific investigations about detox reactions or are detox gone wrong? I'm very curious about that. Yes, well, you know, it's very simple. So when people, uh, their detox pathways aren't open, where they're not pooping, they're not sweating, um, they're maybe they're uh, not drinking enough water, so they're not excreting through their kidneys well enough, um, you know, or even they have lung issues, that's a big detox pathway as well. Um, you know, you're going to, if you mobilize toxins, 
you're going to have symptoms because the, these toxins can be mobilized from your fat and other other you know deposits in our body like our bones and then those will be floating around in our blood looking for an exit pathway and if there isn't one your body has to deal with these that takes energy or deposits somewhere else and it makes you feel worse um, so really really important to for one open your detox pathways um, some people also have genetic issues like they have mthfr or other things as well other you know less famous genetic issues or they're going to have trouble detoxing it doesn't mean they can't detox it's just they're going to, they're going to need more nutritional support than say the next person um, and then there's there's other other issues as well um, where people have uh, usually it's a nutrition based issue where they need proper nutrition to be able to detox properly mainly in the uh, the name of minerals you need lots of minerals for detoxification and many people are severely not just a little bit mineral deficient severely mineral deficient so your body just doesn't work i mean you have to have minerals for uh, so many different uh, processes in our body just for normal functioning but you know when you play, place an additional stress on the body like when you're detoxing uh, you need extra minerals extra you know magnesium zinc selenium potassium sodium and all the other you know trace minerals uh, that we need as well. And um, please talk about, you know, how heavy metals interfere with minerals or what's the relationship there? Is it that certain heavy metals take the same uh, the same site on a cell compared to a mineral that should be there, right? And they can be displaced? Yeah, so minerals and metals can have the, be in the same enzyme binding sites in the body. And the body can, like, say if it doesn't have zinc, for instance, say a lot of people have been not eating red meat, thinking that that's bad for you because they've been told that by the American Medical Association, or the, I'm sorry, the American Heart Association, whatever. And so when you have lack of zinc, your body will retain cadmium that perhaps you're getting in your diet. And it were cigarette smoke, secondhand cigarette smoke, marijuana, what have you, all the many places where you get cadmium. And then their body can use that instead to repair your arteries. But cadmium is very hard and brittle. So uh, and rather than zinc, keeping your arteries nice and flexible and able to open in times of stress, you know, when you have years and years of deposition of cadmium in your arteries, say if you are a smoker, eventually that leads to hardened arteries and hypertension and heart disease. And so, uh, you know, the body will prefer to use zinc, um, but if it doesn't have it, if it doesn't have enough, that it's going to use uh, another, you know, building material on hand. Yeah, so that's uh, almost, I guess in nature, there are heavy metals, right? Especially from my understanding is even, you know, volcano eruptions and things like that will stir up heavy metals. But generally speaking, do you know where we used to find them in nature? Because I guess a lot of heavy metals that we're talking about are probably man-made or have been found in in the earth and then used in all sorts of products like lead for example but uh, maybe you could go over like do we get natural exposures and then what kind of artificial exposures quickly like what's the portrait around where our heavy metal load actually comes from Yes. So, you know, we grew up over millions of years. We have evolved uh, to deal with heavy metals. You know, we had that's why we have a detox system um, and aluminum is the number one and like most uh, common metal in the Earth's crust. Okay. And, you know, and so we just get, you know, uh, you know, you know, these metals can be in rocks and the, our water, the spring water, like, you know, brushes over the rocks and eventually picks this stuff up. It's in our soils and things of that nature. But um, and so uh, ancient man developed a system to to deal with these things. But our ancient system is not equipped to deal with the amount of exposure that we have today, which is drudging up all these metals from the Earth's crust, mining and, and whatnot, and also petroleum and coal usage. That has a lot of metals in it as well. And so it just the stuff gets into our atmosphere. It settles in our soils. It gets in our waterways. It gets into our food supply, into our water, it, it, what have you. And so if you look around you, everything is made of metals. 
I mean, look, everything around you has metals in it. So you're touching it and just in the manufacture of that, it's it gets into our atmosphere and then we breathe it in and, you know, if our air, food, water, it's it's getting into our body. So, um, but today, uh, you know, a lot of doctors will say, oh, detox, that's a, it's a bunch of nonsense. Yeah. Um, but it isn't because what detox is essentially is really just doing things for your body to assist your body's natural ability to detox. So optimizing your liver, optimizing uh, sweating, uh, you know, giving your body the nutrition that it needs so that it can detox because the body can only do so much per day. So the, only, the body can only detox so much per day, no matter what you give it, uh, no matter what nutrition or saunas you do or what have you, you know, the, the body is only able to get rid of so much per day. And <clears throat> what ends up happening is the body ends up there's like a bottleneck and the body will end up building up toxins that it just can't deal with that can't metabolize and we'll just store away in our fat and and it will store away in the bones our bones are big garbage cans and this is why a lot of people have trouble losing weight and um uh, uh unfortunately you know, you know the body will store away in our fat so a lot of people have like a little muffin top or they have like another you know 10 or 20 pounds that they, or 10 or 20 kilos that they can't lose and and when they start detoxing uh they they'll, they'll find the weight starts coming off and rather quickly actually and um uh, but in that whole process there can be problems um with detoxification that, that and symptoms uh, herxheimer reaction so to speak that people need to be aware of so they have to do it kind of in um the right order and the right process and you know sometimes it's warranted worth it working with a practitioner but there's a lot of things you can do on your own to facilitate detox as well yeah i'm i'm really wondering i've been listening to a lot of podcasts with uh, dr andy galpin and dr uberman and they kind of talk about you know the basis of weight loss and these kind of things okay fat burning and i understand these things they, they don't get into the aspect that burning fat will release toxins i don't think it's initially on their awareness either is there good science around a load of toxins if there are certain that have been studied and then weight loss resistance or um someone loses a lot of weight and then it can be measured that the heavy metal load is kind of toxic to their body do we have that you know, I'm not really aware of any research, but, uh, you know, to that effect uh, yeah. with, with regards to weight loss and increased mobilization of toxins. But I did just do a docu-series. I interviewed 80 experts, including yourself, um, about this specific topic and how heavy metals promote weight gain and diabetes and metabolic issues and, um, you know, hormone issues and all these different things that contribute to resistant weight loss and weight gain um, because I, I personally believe that um, and I know factually that um, when people are are eating a lot of you know it's not just the the carbohydrates they're eating or or the bad fats they're eating or the the you know inflammation things like that it's also the chemicals in the food wrapper it's the chemicals of the the pesticides in the food and the heavy metals that all wreak havoc. And, and I have all the scientific research on my website. Like I have lots of articles that go into these specific mechanisms. Like, mm -hmm. and I have, an, I have one article on the thyroid and how I have 180 research citations about how chemicals impact your thyroid, which is a big cause of weight gain. Um, how uh, another article on how specifically heavy metals affect your thyroid and, um, and other articles on how, uh, you know, metals impact your neurotransmitters, which is gonna cause emotional eating. Um, but, <clears throat> but there is, uh, you know, it's, I, I, can't, I can't name the research off of my head, but we do know that that heavy metals and toxins will deposit and store in the fat tissue. And the, so for instance, like there's like arsenic actually will poison enzymes that transport triglycerides out of the fat cells, making it harder to lose weight. And that's one of the wow. hallmarks of arsenic toxicity is weight gain. And there's lots of other mechanisms, you know, where uh, metals, copper, mercury, other metals will destroy your gut bacteria. And that can lead to weight gain as well. Cause if you're not absorbing your food properly, 
you're going to crave more food. You're just going to keep eating and eating and eating. Your body's going to send you hunger, hunger signals until you have the nutrition that you need. And this is, the, I think, where a lot of people find themselves when they're trying to lose weight and they're white knuckling it, trying not to eat, and their body's just you know, crying out, making them eat because they're so mineral deficient or they're just not absorbing the nutrients in their food. So there's many, many, many mechanisms I can go into uh, whereby people uh, have trouble losing weight because of the toxicity in their body. Yeah, well, it makes a lot of sense. And then I think that the reductionist view of this entire problem of toxicity is some people that are skeptics are trying to make things simpler than they are. For example, they would say, okay, well, show me the study that shows that arsenic causes X, Y, Z. Well, okay, that's, that's cute. But at the same time, we need to take into account all exposures in synergy. <laughs> and that's, that's maddening. The reality is even we don't, I don't think we have the scientific ability to even look at these synergies. And that's one thing that has been identified in the EMF space by Dr. Ronald Kostoff. And he's been talking about these toxic synergies where if you have certain, you have certain rat studies uh, where lead exposure at a certain dose is okay. You, you don't get symptoms or you don't get, you know, damage in certain tissues. But when you have lead plus EMFs, then you do. So right there, it shows that, okay, well, EMF exposure will change the lead tolerance of certain tissues or certain animals, including humans. So it's a mess really to study. So, I mean, fo following the precautionary principle, I would think that, you know, engaging in safe detoxification for anyone would make sense considering that we know that all these different metals individually alone, imagine in synergy it's even worse, have an effect on thyroid. Thyroid is, to me, it's metabolism. So right there you have an effect on weight loss. So in the end, it's like, who doesn't need detoxification these days, right? Uh, it would kind of be an approach that everyone needs to take, even more if there's certain health issues that you have. Would you agree with that? No, absolutely. I mean, because, you know, I, like I said, I just interviewed over 80 people for my heavy docu series. And, you know, Dr. Joe Prezorno, who's the founder of Bastyr University, and he's, uh, he's researched over 40,000 different studies to create various programs and, and books that he's written. He wrote a book called The Toxin Solution. And I mean, he believes that diabetes, the number one cause of diabetes is toxins uh, and things wow. like arsenic and, and other metals as well. And, and the research is clear, like on my, like I said, on my website, I've got, you know, hundreds and hundreds of articles, all heavily cited with scientific research on, um, you know, how these metals and toxins cause, I mean, every imaginable health issue, you know, the, the biggest chronic health issues of our time, you know, heart disease. And I, I just illustrated one of the mechanisms with cadmium, whereby that can lead to hypertension and heart disease. And um, there's, you know, every imaginable example, hypertension, that's, you know, lead and mercury build up in the kidneys. Um, you know, uh, there's just, you know, many, many other examples that you can cite like that, including weight gain, weight, obesity ob that leads to its own host of, of health issues and, and complications. So for me, I'm very passionate about this and getting this information out to people because they're not getting it at their at their doctors. And I like to really illustrate issues that people are not getting from their primary care physician or uh, or even their functional medical doctor. I love to talk about, uh, you know, heavy metals and chemicals and detoxification, even energy medicine, and using that as a tool, harnessing that as a very powerful tool to address uh, every manner of illness and correct uh, functioning in the body so that your body just works better and has more energy reserves left over because it's more efficient. And so for me, uh, heavy metals and, and toxins and detoxification are at that, the heart of that conversation because these toxins inhibit so many different met metabolic pathways and can cause every imaginable symptom or, or health condition. Yeah, and maybe that's something I should have mentioned first to make sure that my readers actually don't leave this interview. But the main reason detoxification matters when it comes to EMFs is that people who are electrohypersensitive quite often have some sort of chemical sensitivity 
or they find that they have high loads of heavy metals or toxins when they go to a practitioner who is specialized in environmental medicine. Uh, sometimes they've been exposed to mold and they're completely overwhelmed by it. So is it that the EMFs make them unable to detox or it's the, their toxic load that makes them unable to handle the EMS. It's probably both, you know, is it like the chicken or the egg situation? I, I have no idea, but the reality is this load is, again, acts in synergy, like I mentioned. So it is likely that by ridding your body of the, let's face it, with like heavy metals are not a nutrient, right? <laughs> like we don't need more of it. So by lowering your dose, you're kind of, better able to handle the other toxins that we are kind of exposed to just living in today's society. So to me, it's uh, it's so important. And many of the solutions that I think you'll you'll talk about um, during the discussion, because I want to switch to discuss the discussion around solutions. Many of them I've been doing for years. So the question that's on, I think, everybody's mind when it comes to detox is where can I get started? Because you hear so many things and even I, I mean, I've been researching uh, not only EMLs, but many aspects of health. I get confused. There are the supplements that kind of open your detox pathways. There are binders, then there's sauna, sweating. So just looking at, okay, well, should I do all these things? Where should I start? Should I start with a test? What's the general approach you would recommend someone that let's say let's say the very low cost and then maybe someone who wants to start with a test like what test would they do first uh, that is the easiest one that doesn't cost like five thousand bucks because most people don't have that kind of money. Yes, yes. So what the the general rule of thumb and all the little things that you can do are one opening detox pathways, um, mineralizing and mineralizing your body, taking binders, which are very easy, low cost to do things that absorb toxins like a sponge. You can take uh, natural and unnatural chelators, uh, substances that bind on and grab on to metals and chemicals. And then you can do detox protocols, like you can do uh, infrared sauna, coffee enemas, and then you can do ionic foot baths, which I really love. For very few people, IV chelation, where you do a, an IV of amino acids like DMSA or EDTA, that has a place. That's not where you start. But like you don't start with, you know, say there's a conflict between two countries. You start with diplomacy. You don't start with a nuclear bomb, you know. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I think the IV chelation is like not appropriate for most people, but it has its place. If someone is super, super lead toxic and it's life threatening, yeah, I want that out of my body as quickly yeah. as possible. And there might be some side effects to that, but the the other part is worse. But for the most part, I like to start slow, slow with things and then graduate up to more intense uh, detox protocols. Okay, so kind of ensuring that people can handle it first, right? So I'm thinking about where I was at 26. I could, you know, I ate one bite of my lunch and I felt bloated. Like literally, I could not digest anything. I could not sleep at night and I, it, like everything was wrong with me. So it's probably not the right time to detox because it's obvious it's like the liver is not functioning, the kidney is not functioning. I was not regular, you know, going to the bathroom every day. So I guess if if you're in chronic disease, is it like, should you get healthy first or... Um, Yes. Yeah. So, so that leads to another point is, you know, building a foundation and, okay. and preparation for detoxification. And so, and there's a lot of people like yourself that they have a lot of food sensitivities. They have the reactions to a lot of different supplements. Um, they're really unwell. And the, the reality is it takes energy to detox. It just yeah. does. And some people have tried detoxes. They felt terrible, which you know, to a certain degree, you're not always going to feel amazing when you're detoxing. You have metals and chemicals roaming around your bloodstream wreaking havoc. That doesn't lend itself to feeling amazing. So you do have to deal with that a little bit, but you should still be able to function. So you should still feel okay enough to go to work or to do your, your regular activities um, with the occasional, you know, maybe you're a little too tired on the weekends and you need to rest. That's normal. Um, but what is 
isn't normal as not being able to function and having, you know, just different detox symptoms, severe headaches and things like that. These are all things that can be managed uh, fairly easily. But if you find like you just can't do any detoxes or you can't take supplements, you need to prime your body first. And how I like to do that is with energy medicine. There's a program called Ness Health, N-E-S Health, um, that I like to get people's bodies working correctly. And it's just a really ingenious scan that you do. You test about 800 different data points and you correct your body energetically. And so you basically send correct operating instructions to your body to correct functioning. And it's something I've used for about seven years personally. And it's just, it's absolutely amazing. And um, it's something that I recommend to people to kind of really everyone to prime their body because you end up having better sleep, you have more energy, you you're, you dramatically improve your digestion because it's very hard to do that just with bone broth and glutamine and some of the other, you know, physical recommendations that people typically uh, recommend. Because when you, you you're only, um, it doesn't matter what you eat. It only matters what you absorb. And a lot of people are taking all these supplements and eating all this amazing food. And there's so much working against our gut, including toxins and chlorine in the water and, and just that kills our gut bacteria. There's so many things working against our gut that just that aspect alone of using Ness Health to correct your gut functioning and improve nutrient absorption is, is gold. And it also tells you what your food sensitivities are and just a lot of information and a very, very easy, very inexpensive protocol to do. Not going to be a miracle after a couple of months. I mean, it's something you have to do for you know, six, 12 months, ideally, at least, uh, to to seek the improvements you're looking for. And then, you know, at a certain point, um, you know, you can, uh, during that time, you can take minerals, you can do coffee enemas, you can take binders to kind of prep your body for detoxification. Then later down the road, you can, can do things that are a little bit more, you know, taxing on the body for detox, like, um, you know, taking natural chelators or doing infrared saunas and things like that. Okay, yeah, that's interesting, and uh, I can vouch for NES Health. I don't, I don't think that's something I talked about that much during my work around EMLs. But um, in in 2017, uh, I was there for the NES Health training. Uh, invited uh, for four days, I was there with my my wife Jen, and I was very impressed with the technology. And I did see massive benefits myself, and I've been using their device the my health for for years it's just a tool that i use i feel i feel a big difference and a lot of people <laughs> came to me like they're skeptics about it but if you read the entire body of work behind nes health you and if you take the time to do that it means you're pretty motivated because there's a lot to read there's multiple books and um you know the podcast that you guys did for a long time and then just just the body of research that is there on the website it is in my mind still to this day almost unbeatable as far as like one of the most credible approaches to bioenergetics the entire field of let's say influencing the informational fields of the human body and that's how I perceive it. And that's probably not even like my understanding is probably very simplistic, but it's very interesting. So would you consider, you know, the bioenergetic approach more gentle to the body because it will not kind of artificially raise levels of this or that that kind of by default uses like the complex systems of the body to go back to homeostasis? Is, is this why you would start with that? Yeah, you know, because essentially, you know, why why are people sick? You know, why aren't people able to detox? It's because their body isn't functioning physically correctly mm. for many, many different reasons. And and yeah, you might exhibit symptoms, but you might not always know exactly what's going on with you or the extent of what's going on with you. And we have an energetic body. We have, and that's why EMF impacts us so negatively because we have this communication system in our body. It's lots of messages and instructions being sent in this energy field that's been established. It's about you know three meters or ten feet in diameter around us, and and we send information like just information is sent over Wi-Fi. Uh, we have information sent on scalar waves 
throughout our body. And that's one of the reasons EMF makes us so sick is it interferes in our communication system and interferes on our brain waves and interferes in our, our heart waves, information that our heart sends out to our body and scrambles those messages or they don't reach the intended de destination and then our body doesn't function properly. And so when you kind of go back to the basics of how the body works, where the body, uh, the physical body takes instruction from our energy field. And when you have energetic blocks in your energy field, say on your meridians or your chakras or on your organs, and these energetic blocks are caused by emotional trauma, heavy metals, chemicals, EMF, et cetera, then the body is not going to function properly. So when you go back to this, the, the, the root cause of a lot of health issues uh, and work with the body energetically to clear these energetic blocks, identify them with a Nest Health scan and clear them. Um, and I really feel like using the My Health device. Actually, I'm using it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this device you have, it looks kind of like a cell phone. Yeah. But um, we, I really think Nest really only works well with this device. Okay, it is okay. an investment. Um, but the, the the really incredible results that I've seen have been using a My Health. Okay, so just take note of that. And so when you go back to the you know the root of how the body works, it in work in the energy fields. So it's a, it's a much more elegant way to work, a, a more effective way to work. And it's, it's subtle. I mean, you, you, you know, you're not going to, you know, I saw a lot of improvements in the first 30 days. Like I was sleeping better. I had a uh, better mood. I had better energy, but it's not like lightning struck me, you know? Um, but over time I felt much better. I was actually bulimic um, before I started Nest Health and tried everything within two months. That was no longer uh, a factor in my life. Wow. It still re rears its ugly head on occasion, you know, under times of stress. But it, I was really taken aback by that. And I found that many clients that I've had, and we put at least 4,000 people through this program. And uh, I find people, they just stop drinking. They stop smoking cigarettes. They stop uh, emotional eating because that underlying impetus that kind of was a underlying root cause of that, those behaviors just isn't there anymore. And one of the reasons it's so effective is because it addresses emotional trauma, which is that, you know, conventional medical research from Kaiser Permanente, 17,000 people, that 65% of physical health, is health issues are caused by emotional trauma. So what Nest Health does is identifies all these things and it, it identifies your metals and chemicals, mold, um, even the type of EMF you're sensitive to. And it, it helps to kind of clear all this, these energetic blocks and gets your body functioning better. So that's kind of the explanation of it in a nutshell. Yeah, but it, I use it, it yeah, yeah. Yeah. I use it when the people can't do anything else. They can't detox. They can't they can eat yeah. five foods and but it's it's good for anyone that just wants to, you know, improve their functioning overall. Yeah, I think, you know, that's kind of a completely different approach than to taking just nutraceuticals or um doing physical exercise, working on the informational fields. And I I know I know that this is, you know, frontier science. But still, it is it is science. It is a very thorough scientific approach behind it. And I did talk with Dr. Beverly Rubik, who coined the term biofield, the human biofield at the NIH. You know, she's she's a pioneer, and of course, she recognizes that a lot of things are early. But even she says that the early test that she has, like the biofield, is heavily disrupted by a cell phone, and it takes. It, it could take up to the rest of the day for after a short call to have a normal biofield. So there's just, you know, it's an anecdote in, in how it's been, that scientific study has been designed, but it just shows you that, of course, we are impacted. And what are the downstream consequences of, of that? I, I have no idea. This, is, this system is way more complex than most medical research wants to accept it. Um, but I think it's a fascinating approach and it's, it's nice that at least you have different tools in your toolbox. And I, I did not expect to talk about bioenergetics, but let, let's, let's talk about it anyway. Uh, I think that for the emotional releases I've had with the My Health, I cannot describe. I cannot describe exactly on, especially on the, the fun, what is the, the function for um, deep- Liberator. Deep, Liberator. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I put Liberator on and at times I just, 
you know, I broke down. I'm not someone who before age, before I had my kid, I couldn't, I could very rarely cry, you know? And then, I don't know, something changed. I guess when you have kids, you, you kind of have higher peaks the, of the emotional kids break experience. You, the, the kids yeah. break you down. <laughs> yeah, they break you down. I don't know if they break you down or, or it's, it's both. It's, it's, it's good crying <laughs> and bad crying. Uh, like, I think that your emotional uh, depth goes, uh, like, I don't know, it becomes larger, like what you can experience. Uh, but depending on every man, of course, and some of them are more repressed than others. And... Uh, so yeah, I could not experience my emotions very easily, but the my health at times, I mean, I, I didn't even know what was happening, you know, just an outburst of stress going out my body and just crying. I was, I was even wondering if there's something wrong with me, <laughs> like, am I depressed? What's happening? But I could really, you know, pinpoint that when I'm using this for 20, 30 minutes, watch out because if i if there's something going on in my life i could right there like start crying and i could be like wait a minute this is bizarre but of course liberator it is liberating like yes, it, yes it the is. alternative would be to just hold it inside and we know where that leads you just it causes uh, physical health issues i mean all cancers yeah, have it, a root it does in not emotional work. trauma yeah exactly so anyway i had to, i had to tell you this and and combined for me it was liberator combined with coffee enemas and i don't know if there's something like a sort of synergy that happened for my body but when i was detoxing especially using coffee enemas a lot uh, I did experience incredible releases and then also the joy that comes with it, like feeling extremely clear. And uh, maybe I want to steer away a little bit from bioenergetics. And I know that people on your website can look at it. And I, I, I recommend exploring that, especially NES Health. It's I'm not even an affiliate or anything. I never did an endorsement. Maybe I should have. But, you know, it is to this day one of the most credible approaches. That's what I'll say about it. But as far as solutions that people can do more like on an everyday basis to detox. Um, please talk about those. First thing that comes to mind is kind of sweating and the fact that even before I started um, my, let's say my workout for Spartan races, I did not sweat regularly, let's face it. Now it's more like intense workouts, three, four days a week. So I sweat more, but for the average person, um, how important is sweating and then other strategies that are low cost and maybe talk about the importance of coffee enemas because if someone just under <laughs> just came across a term now and they're googling around at work and <laughs> they got it i'm just imagining the boss is like what are you looking at like it is it is something bizarre so let's guy dive into it a little bit for a few minutes yes yeah so so there's some great things you can do easy to do at home so i i do love coffee enemas you know they are a very and they're that versus like doing like colon therapy where you're just using water to clean out your colon you know it's not the same thing because yeah. the goal is not cleaning out your colon the goal is taking the ingredients in the coffee the caffeine the palmitic acid and other things in it and that goes up your portal vein it dilates uh, all the capillaries in your liver and that causes this hormetic stressful reaction that causes your liver to dump it the toxins it's working on into your colon for elimination. So that's kind of the simplistic explanation of it. And, and in fact, like with the Gerson therapy protocol for cancer, they'll have people do four mm -hmm. coffee enemas a day, just getting that yeah. liver dumping, dumping, dumping. And um, and the liver is the seat of anger and, and other emotions. So it can be very emotional. And also uh, like when you're doing a coffee enema and also a, a lot of people that have a lot of anger, you need to support your liver um, in that. And also whenever, if I ever have a period where I feel anxious or depressed or ungrounded in some way, I can do a coffee enema and relieve that pain. You can also relieve pain, headaches. And just, if you feel just kind of ugh, toxic or you've had like a really big meal or got some GI in, you know, uh, discomfort, you can also coffee enema can relieve that, but it's going to be used to manage detoxification symptoms. So it's really important part of anyone doing a detox protocol. You know, the bottleneck can be the liver, 
where the liver is having trouble kind of processing all this stuff. Maybe it doesn't have the nutrients it needs or what have you. Um, but doing a coffee enema can help relieve detox symptoms. Um, there's there's some research studies out there, but mainly it's just anecdotally that you feel like a million dollars after you yeah. do a coffee enema. So do them. You feel good after you do them. And it's, it's not just the caffeine, the, the caffeine rush. There is definitely more to it than that. Um, if you are caffeine sensitive, you still can do uh, coffee enemas. You just use a very, very, very little amount of, of coffee to brew like your, you know, few liters of, of coffee enema coffee. Yeah. And there, you probably have tutorials on how to do them. And oh, yeah. Uh, OK, mm -hmm. you, you have all of this. So Myers Detox, look at them because, of course, if people, oh, do, do, do you have to? <laughs> Do you have to use the coffee hot and all these stupid things I hear on the internet? No, of course, you you put it at, you know, room temp and uh, there are, of course, it is, a, I would say, a very bizarre experience at first. For me, it was, you know, it was almost, uh, I was almost, you know, wondering, am I, have I lost my mind? I'm doing, you know, some medical procedure <laughs> in my bathroom, you know, but uh over after a few times, I felt comfortable with it. And of course, it wasn't just something I read about. I, I had also exchanges in person with, you know, with you or other people I met at Mindshare at different events that are like, oh, yeah, I do them. So I'm like, OK, well, I'm not that weird because I trust these people, you know, and it's not. And I did read Gerson therapy. And in fact, uh, the Gerson book, I read it while doing my first, you know, five to ten enemas and and I was just thinking about these people that are trying these protocols and I uh I don't know it touched me you know some people are when when you have cancer or you have something that your body is not, just not working I don't know I just felt like such a connection to these people that have to have they have to detox like urgently to survive so it was just a I don't know a bizarre and why wait connection. why wait to get to that point yeah exactly no. Yo, you don't want to get to that point for sure so you mentioned coffee enemas that that's one thing and then i'll mention coffee enemas are fairly low cost you buy the equipment uh, you maintain it and then you buy coffee it has to be very high quality and you probably have guidelines on, on on all of this but overall it's a very low cost strategy also so you, if you're strapped for cash uh, you mentioned before we recorded that 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 is one of your primary detox strategies you would be using if you had only one uh, yeah. I'll mention it is also among my favorites personally it's just nothing the the way my 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 friend and colleague Anthony Di Clementi put it uh years ago he said I've tried everything and he's kind of a big biohacker devices all supplements all techniques saunas this and that and he said and yet to this day there's nothing that makes me feel better than pouring coffee <laughs> down, down my you know <laughs> it's a bit crass but I mean, it's just, it works. It, it just, it makes him feel so good that he's like, well, nothing is really equivalent. And that's what I keep hearing. So, I mean, don't discount it until you have given it a fair shot. That's what I'll say. Yeah, what exactly. else? especially the guys yeah. listening yeah. out there, they're like, yeah, oh, yeah. Exactly. not going to happen. For sure. That's but a, then, but, that's a but then when psychological you try hurdle. It, yeah. Yeah. When you try it and you feel good, and the first couple times, like you mentioned, can be a little bit rough or messy or trying to, you got to get a, kind of figure it out, yeah. the, you know, what works for you and what doesn't. But once you kind of get the hang of it, then a little, people don't stop. Like, you know, a lot of people have resistance to it, obviously, but yeah. many people who start doing them keep doing them. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great strategy. And, and then when it comes to uh, the second thing I had in mind was sweating. And then do you have other detox strategies that are either extremely low cost or free that people? Yeah. So, try? yeah. So taking minerals, just taking minerals because you're, you need that not just for detox, but for health. But when you take minerals, you're pushing out and displacing heavy metals. So okay. when you take zinc, you're getting rid of mercury and cadmium. When you take potassium, you're getting rid of thallium and cesium. Uh, when you take, uh, you know, calcium, you're getting rid of lead. And so there's just a lot, a lot of different, you know, examples like that. Um, selenium, you're getting rid of mercury as well. 
So there's just, uh, you need all these different minerals and you need all the trace minerals as well. And so a lot of people, when they're drinking water, they're trying to drink, you know, their eight glasses a day or whatever, and they're just, it's just running right through them. They're going to the bathroom. And a lot of people don't drink water because they don't like that feeling mm -hmm. of having to go to the bathroom all the time. The reason that's happening is because uh, you don't have enough minerals to hold on to that water and or you're drinking water that's maybe not hydrating you, you know, uh, damaged water or reverse osmosis or what, you know, what have you. So you need to be drinking like spring water or maybe um, uh, water that's been um, restructured if it's reverse osmosis and adding lots of minerals to that. And so I, ha I add minerals to all of my water. And I also, I use this way back water too. I have no affiliation with them, but this is laser enhanced water. So you can get it on waybackwater.com. That's what I use. It makes the water super hydrating. So it actually gets into your cells mm. and it doesn't go in the toilet. You don't have to constantly urinate. Uh, it's you're actually absorbing the water. And I think a lot of people don't get hydration correct and they really pay a price for it later in their health uh, down the line. And to detox, you have to be properly hydrated. And so those are my strategies for hydration. And then adding uh, the minerals improves hydration, improves detoxification. Just that can be too much for some people. I mean, just okay. that alone, wow. uh, just taking minerals, people can have detox reactions just from that. Um, and then you mentioned sweating. So any type of sweating is great, but when you're, when you're sweating, when you're exercising, you're usually in a stress state. So you're in your sympathetic nervous system. And so to detox, you need to be in your parasympathetic nervous system. So not all sweating okay. is created equal. So in a sauna, you're sitting there, you're relaxed and you are, you know, the sweat that you have is, uh, going to be, you know, more like have be more productive, have more toxins in it. It. But any kind of sauna is fine. You know, a, a Swedish or a Finnish sauna is okay. But when you're in an infrared sauna, um, you're, you have more toxins in your sweat. It's more productive sweat. So ideally, and you can stay in it longer also than you can a, and then a super hot, you know, Finnish or Swedish sauna, which is a kind of like the dry saunas you see at your gym. Um, so doing an infrared sauna is definitely going to be more... Um, more bang for your buck for your time. And uh, so that's what I, I would recommend. And, you know, there's uh, studies out there that show in just a, a regular sauna, uh, if you do a regular sauna, uh, five days a week, you have a 40% reduction in mortality from all causes. Yeah, and that's why. I, yeah, it's just incredible. it's amazing, and that's just from a regular sauna. So you need to get out there, get in a sauna, get start sweating, um, because that's the name of the game. You're gonna get, get be getting a facilitating your body and getting rid of a lot of a, a lot of toxins that we accumulate in our fat, and you lose weight too, and it feels really good. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add that if you do sauna, make sure consider electrolytes. I I'm not fully sure. If you can, let's say, exercise hard three to four days per week. Let's say if you're at my level and you, you do like hard workouts plus sauna therapy here and there without proper electrolytes, like a supplement. I don't really know if you can do without, especially the potassium would be hard. Uh, do you agree with that? And do you use electrolytes? Like are there specific products that you take or recommend? Yeah, so I actually just drink coconut water. I mean, okay. I, I drink natural coconut water from a yeah. coconut, not you know, yeah. not some of the stuff it's in the delicious. bottle. Delicious, my god! But I live in yeah. Mexico, so they just deliver it to my house yeah. by the gallon, you know. Yeah. But um, but coconut water is great. Like the raw and pasteurized is nice. Um, you can also do something like this. This is Trace uh, by Activation Products. I love this. I put that in my water. But you can just put any sea salt in your water, and that's enough. You don't need to get a specific electrolyte powder. I mean, okay. I think some of them can have a lot of additives and sugars and things like that and a lot of marketing around them it's just salt so just put some salt in your water and you're good to go if it's not if it's not like dissolving just start you know heat up the water you know and then dissolve the salt and add that to cold water not rocket science but you know you just need you if you sweat you have to replace minerals and you have to do that even more so, you, you know, even if you don't sweat and you know, don't exercise, you, most people are mineral deficient because of our, our diets and lack of minerals in our diet. Yeah. And I would say just 
basic water intake. Of course, you do need, you know, the quality water filtered, restructured. That's like a, a whole, I think that's like a thousand podcast discussions right there. <laughs> like you can get pretty deep. But once you have the right water, even just drinking enough water, I realized that I don't know what exactly is the reason. And I came across information years ago that um, a lot of people lose their natural sense of thirst. And I don't know exactly why that is. I don't know if you have any insights on that. But the reality is, like, most of the time, I don't feel thirsty. But I go to the bathroom and, you know, it could be, like, like very yellow, which shows, you know, I'm already on my way to suboptimal hydration so if you want to stay sharp and also maintain your energy levels kind of drinking preventatively i find that sometimes i'm like okay i'm drinking before i get thirsty and that's a little bit counterintuitive and i've, I've heard the argument well you know in nature we didn't have that but we're not in nature we're kind of surrounded by we're kind of in a you know postmodern world so do you agree as far as like Water quantity, should you drink before you get thirsty? What's your personal approach or what you could recommend your clients? Yes. Yeah, that's a very good question because, you know, I think that old adage of you need eight glasses a day is not correct. Okay. Um, everyone is different. And I think it's really bad for you to drink eight glasses of water that don't have any minerals in them because you're essentially flushing your body of minerals uh, mm. even more so when you okay. do that. And so that's a recipe for problems. And so, um, you know, I, again, I think everyone is different. I do think you need to stay ahead of that, that thirst because the minute you're thirsty, you're already very dehydrated. Okay. Um, but it is a cue is, is, you know, when you do start to feel thirsty, just drink a ton of water as much as you can kind of stomach and, and you kind of will learn for you what works and what doesn't. But I think everyone is different. Everyone has different climates that they live in. If you live in a very Dry, dry climate, you're going to need more water than someone that lives in a humid client. And, um, you know, body weight is a factor as well. Your diet, you get water from your diet. You get water from vegetables and lettuce and things like that. I'm also a big fan of drinking a green juice every day because uh, that's super, super concentrated minerals, uh, super amazing for you. Um, but yeah, you just, you do have to listen to your body to a certain degree and, and get in touch with your your body's cues and 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 try as best you can to stay ahead of that that thirst cue but if you do feel thirsty just drink a, a huge glass of water with minerals in it okay makes sense so and the minerals we recommend like trace uh from activation products and i'm i'm just wondering personally i've been using electrolyte powders and oftentimes they contain you know sodium magnesium i don't know what kind of magnesium they use in there maybe citrate i'm not sure and then potassium as far as like is it important to add potassium? That's something where a pinch of sea salt might not cover it. What do you think about like the role of potassium and are most people kind of lacking in this? Uh, in which case, maybe I would recommend a, recommend, uh, a kind of supplementation for all. Like what's the, the deal here? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, I prefer using things like uh, a sea salt, uh, typically, because you do have all of your trace minerals in that. There yeah. are also other products out there like healthy salt that have their lower sodium and okay. they've been washed, you know, for three years, washed and dried, washed and dried. And they're very, like a lower sodium uh, mineral supplement okay. and very high in magnesium. So there's different options out there. But I think most people, I don't, you know, the electrolytes are good, you know, for your sweating and things like that. But, you know, we have like a hundred minerals that we actually need. Yeah. So it's better, I think, to use like, um, a product like uh, like trees, which is just ocean minerals. It just and it has a really nice mouthfeel. Like when you know you drink Fiji water, it has a lot of silica in it. it has kind of like a nice mouthfeel to it. This does that to your water. So okay. that, that's why I really like this. And it's also, um, but I also will add salt as well. Um, but you know there is a, that factor. You've got to kind of like dissolve it and, and make sure it's dissolved in the water, and it can taste kind of salty. Whereas this doesn't. The trace doesn't but again coconut water also uh is amazing that's what i prefer for electrolytes um just you know get it from mother nature uh, but or use all of the above you know you don't have to yeah. use like any one strategy just use a lot of different things to to hydrate and mineralize your body yeah and in the end yeah do you, i think just 
experimenting with it, kind of finding, okay, for, for me, I realized that after lunch, if I take a short nap, after that, I need to rehydrate myself before I get into the afternoon coffee. <laughs> if I just get another coffee, then I, I mean, my energy crashes and part of it is maybe I shouldn't have the coffee in the first place or have to rely on it, but it's really that the coffee pushes me in further dehydration. And I've seen, you know, arguments, is it diuretic, is it not? I don't, for me, it seems to be, you know, heavily diuretic where I'll fall into even more dehydration. And I realized that at three or 4 p.m., if I feel like, oh my God, I'm so exhausted, I haven't, like, I feel like I haven't slept for 10 days, this is the feeling of have like like deep dehydration and when i rehydrate myself i'm like oh wait a minute oh no the en energy is back so like throughout especially the last year i've discovered a little bit more about how my body behaves and i think that's part of the journey you know looking at okay well just considering all these tools that we've shared and also the tools we shared on um detoxification of course and finding what works for you uh it's been a mind-blowing discussion we have so many different things i hope that people are not too overwhelmed uh i will include resources to all of this and of course i recommend if you have something that piques your interest is it detoxification or bioenergetics uh coffee enemas uh hydration we went to different topics here that are each very important go to myersdetox.com really that's this, this is just like an entire library of articles that you've written i don't know how many but i don't even do you know how many articles you wrote i mean it's yeah a, i think we have about 400 now and we have okay, almost so, 500 podcasts 500 but, but podcasts some of them well. and like as you said some of them are like textbooks so it's yeah. i mean it's hundreds and hundreds of resources and interviews that you did and um, when is this docuseries you've been working on released because i want to hear about it of course my community will hear about it but uh, i've been interviewed um for the docuseries but you said it's almost 80 experts around detoxification i personally cannot wait to listen to it because I don't think there's been another docuseries that focused on heavy metals uh, and really the world's top class experts and scientists. So talk about it a little bit. I think a lot of, everyone's going to be very excited to hear about it. Yeah, you know, I wanted to really highlight the fact that uh, so many people that are trying to lose weight, that it's not their fault, that it's not that they lack willpower or yeah. that they're genetically flawed or, or what have you, or they're not, you know, reducing carbs enough. It just isn't that simple. When we have in the research so many different metabolic poisons in the form of heavy metals and chemicals. And so I really wanted to highlight how heavy metals impact our mitochondrial energy production, our, you know, thyroid, our our hormones, our stress hormones, our neurotransmitters, our you know abil ability to digest food and metabolize food, um, how it causes uh, toxins, cause blood sugar issues, um, and how they cause so many other issues, brain health issues as well. So I really wanted to drive home that point that you know people need to remove these metabolic poisons to reestablish healthy weight and proper functioning on many different levels. And so that's really my passion and my my life's purpose as well to help kind of, um, you know, help uh, illuminate what's going on with uh, people with their health and, and a lot of things that they're missing by yeah. doing all checking all the boxes. Oh, I'm eating low carb and I'm eating a healthy diet and it's organic and I have all the supplements. I'm doing stress release and the yoga and the meditation. And why do I feel like crap? You know, <laughs> and like that was like me, you know, yeah. I wake up just feeling like meh. You know, am I like, what do I have to do to feel good or to be a healthy weight? And so, uh, so that's why I wanted to do this series. So it's going to be coming out in September, October, 2023. And, um, yeah, so I'm really excited about it. But if you, if you guys want to like get some info now on maybe your, you know, body burden of toxins, I created a quiz at heavymetalsquiz.com. Okay. And you can take that just a couple of minutes and you can get like a free video series that answers a lot of questions, things we touched on in, in this uh, interview today uh, to help kind of answer more of your questions. Perfect. Well, I cannot recommend enough your services, the testing that you help do with the hair mineral analysis, bioenergetics, uh, you know, 
I think it's a great approach as well that people should consider. So there's a lot of uh, thought to give, but just go towards, I guess, approaches that really resonate with you. I think that uh, Myers Detox is an incredible resource for all of this uh, and also for supplements of high quality. And that's something, part, part of one thing I learned from you is, yeah, you can go cheap on Amazon and iHerb and all this, but uh, yeah, sometimes, especially for detoxification, sometimes you don't have the right formulations. So also part of what you do with you and also coaches that, that are um, following up on these hair mineral analysis is recommending the right supplements, the right formulations. And I know that you are uh, obsessed with quality also. And yet yeah, sometimes it comes the, the price comes with it, but it's just part of the game. I mean, especially when uh, you're a naturopathic doctor and you have patients seeing you, you don't want to give them the cheap stuff that you don't know works. So uh, anyway, I, I think everything you do is just has been impeccable. It's been more than a, de a decade um, that I've been following your work and I'm really honored to uh, share all of it with my audience. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Nick. Yeah, I, lo I love your work too. It's, it's awesome. It's been awesome knowing you for so long and following your work as well. You know, I look to you for all things EMF related. <laughs> but yeah, but thanks so much for having me on. Sure. Well, thanks for being here. So again, MyersDetox.com. And uh, let us know in the comments, did something resonate with you? Uh, because I do feel like maybe there's a part two to this interview with uh, Dr. Myers, because there's <laughs> so many subtopics that we could have uh, go, gone, gone down uh, to uh, or rabbit holes, if you will. So um, all right. Well, um, Dr. Myers, I hope there's a next time.